Foot Clan, do not miss today's show. We've got a lot of fantasy football news for you. You've got start-sit decisions to make for the playoffs. We're here to help. Don't miss the show. Oh, Foot Clan Championship season is upon us, and this that means championship time. you got to celebrate like a fantasy champ. You want that gear. You want the trophies, the rings, the I belts. I want it all, baby. Everything you need to celebrate and gloat and rub it in the faces of your meager pathetic opponents where can i get the best <laughs> stuff though you go to fantasychamps.com that's where you that's all you need fantasychamps.com welcome to the fantasy footballers podcast coming to you from pristineauction.com studios with your hosts andy holloway jason moore and mike wright Ah, welcome in. Woo-hoo-hoo. That was a big one. Oh my! Oh my! Oh me! Oh my! Welcome in. I'm I'm clenched over here now. You're just a little tense, a little clenched. I am now. That was Wednesday, terrifying. <laughs> Wednesday, December fourth, twenty nineteen. Well, I've been up longer than you, Mike. That's why. Oh, have you? Yeah, I I had the the three a.m. sick kid. Experience, so I've been up a little bit mm. longer, which means I a couple more cups of coffee. I'll have you know I overslept by twenty minutes today, <laughs> <laughs> causing my children to almost be late. For oh, school. okay. I, I thought you were going to try to compete with me. No, no. Uh, in how early you've been up, but it was quite quite the opposite. Yes. yes. Wait. So do you, do your children have their own alarms? I mean, can, do they get up on their own? <laughs> no, child, please. No. So, so you are the alarm. Yes. It all comes down to you. If Dad is not up getting everyone awake. Then the house will never start. Unless, of course, it's Saturday. Then everyone right. will wake up at 4.30 a.m. so they can watch television. Yeah, that is how it works. It's Freaking unbelievable. Dirt. I like to believe now, I'm visualizing this, that all of your children's bedrooms have like the the dinner bell style bells on it. And you just <laughs> yeah. come by. Bring, bring. Well, now the thing is I bring the dog in and I'm like, Daisy, get him. Oh, she just, nice. She jumps up and just starts licking the crap out of their faces. Yeah, that's smart. That's smart. All right, Jason, how you doing this morning? I'm, I am fantastic. <laughs> I am right in between you guys. I got a regular night of sleep. Oh, okay. All right. You're, we're trying to find. You're trying to find time to hang your Christmas lights. It's impossible. It gets dark so early right now, and, w- and we it's got been a busy raining line. a lot Which, in yeah. Arizona. Which What's is really with that? Weird. I don't know, but yeah, I'm trying to like sneak in a window to get out front and get my my yard lit up and my. Well, you, snowman that's way too big. Put oh, up. the big snowman. He's back. He's Is that the one that back. fell on your wife? It's the one that, yes, <laughs> fell on my wife, has blown down the street. It's 15. It blew down the street? It's 15 feet tall. And when you don't remember how tall 15 feet is, it a basketball hoop. Think is about Mo Alley Cox. Cox. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Oh, it's a special Wednesday. How you doing there, Judge Giamatti? Doing great. He's got a Christmas hat on today. Little and yesterday, but little I mean, known fact oh, yeah. about Brooksy is that he wears a Christmas hat every December. Mm-hmm. The whole month. The Santa, yeah. the Santa hat. Huh? Just wait. Real is co- this news to you, Andy? <laughs> Ooh, this has been a ongoing thing every year. Is this? <laughs> is it because it's so cozy, Brooks? It's usually within a couple weeks of Christmas. I'll say, and it's just uh, it's cold outside, so throw this thing on instead of the beanie. Spread, All right, spread that joy. That's nice. Uh, buy sell today, presented by Pristine Auction. We're going to do some news and notes, the Thursday night preview, a whole bunch of playoff mailbag answering questions. I'm sure we'll muse about some of these very difficult situations like the Kansas City backfield, Dalvin Cook. Your waiver wires went through today. We will get you ready to go for playoffs week 14. Uh, My son has already grilled me with 15 to 20 questions for his team as he makes his playoff debut this week. He's already picked up Jack Doyle. Oh, great pickup. Yeah, because he's he's dealing with the Austin Hooper question mark. Mm. And the Greg Olson question mark. So yeah. he's got to find another tight end, and Doyle was just sitting there. You can find us on Twitter at the FF Ballers. The website's thefantasyfootballers.com. Jointhefoot.com is the fantasy community, the Foot Clan. We're going to do a very special uh, kind of behind-the-scenes unboxing neato video where we give away a bunch of signed memorabilia very soon. That's probably coming next week. There'll probably be some Christmas hats involved in that as well. You will want to find it on youtube.com slash the fantasy footballers. Let's do some buy sell. 
Buy or Sell, presented by Pristine Auction. All right, let's do a week 14 edition of Buy, Sell. That's what it's. That's the theme, Brooks. That's how creative you got. <laughs> week fourteen. Week fourteen. Edition. The Santa hat goes on. The ideas go out the window. <laughs> Kaput. Fantasy playoffs edition. Okay. All that? right. Thank you, Brooks. Yeah. Th- when you say it like that, I'm in. Baker Mayfield buy or sell a top twelve quarterback against Cincinnati. Ooh. That is. That's a tough one. I mean, it's, uh, it's right on the cusp. Cincinnati has been terrible against the pass. This is part of why I wanted Sam Darnold last week, but that didn't work out very well. It, in in the end, I'm going to bet against the Browns and Baker. I'm going to sell, and I, you know, this is one of those uh, Dalton is back. Maybe the team's trying to get it together. I think the line is good because he should be close. He should be close to a top twelve. I mean, he certainly has the... Aren't all the teams trying to get it together, Jason? None of them are trying to take it apart, are they? I, you know, sometimes Look when at I Miami. watch them play, I'm not sure. Okay. All right. But yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to sell here. And part of the reason I'm going to sell, because I am very close on this. We have some, some breaking news well, after the, the game. Or we can do it now well, if you want. But- breaking news. Daniel Jones. Very, did we confirm this report, Brooks? It's a verified source, at least. Yes. Daniel Jones will very likely miss Monday's game against the Eagles. He Eli! is he's in a protective boot. Uh, Pat Shermer says it's an injury, injury similar to Saquon, which means Eli Manning will be back. Wow. Saquon up. <laughs> wow. Yeah, I mean, why play Daniel Jones with any risk right now? He's your future. Totally. Um, Eli gets to come out and swan song it. Interesting. Oh man, interesting. That's, come that's on, come be... on, Eli, get it done, man. All right, Eli Manning, top twelve quarterback no, this week. I'll Buy sell. Or sell. I'll sell it. Okay. It's the Eagles. Uh, sell. It'll be interesting to see where he lands. Uh, but back to Baker Mayfield for top twelve. I'm I'm gonna sell. I actually have Baker currently at nineteen. So like I have him pretty far out. Cincinnati, they're there's a strange defense because they've been just horrifically bad against the pass, and then sometimes they just shut down fantasy quarterbacks. So I, I'm going to sell that Baker's more of a QB2 this week. I think so, too. I think so, too. I, a couple weeks ago, I, I think I was more confident in this one, but I think I'm going to sell it. Todd Gurley, will he have 100 total yards against Seattle this week? Seattle is allowing 99.6 rushing yards per game. Wow. Uh, Gurley had, what, 115 total yards against Arizona. He had 133 against Chicago, but then against Baltimore, it was not pretty. Yeah, that weird game where they got blown out right off the bat, abandoned the run. Um, yeah, this is this is a tough one. What do you think? Buy or sell? So I looked at all of the buy sell this morning, did my research, and realized I'm a negative Nancy <laughs> today. I will be selling the lot of them, but this one is in the lot, so I am selling. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't think he gets 100 total yards. It's been up and down for him. It's been up and down for Goff. It's been up and down for the offense, and Seattle's a better team. The lack of targets for Todd Gurley is so baffling. I mean, seven targets over the past three weeks combined. Like That that was not the recipe for, for the Rams. Like Todd Gurley, and he's out there. It's not that they're trying to give him rest. Like he's They're trying to make him a focal point again. But throw him the ball – and 100 total yards versus the Seahawks, I will I will sell. I think that's too high. All right, I'm going to buy this one. They're at home. They're competing for that last wild card spot. Gurley with over 100 in two of the last three games, including a, a tougher matchup against Chicago. I'll go ahead and buy it. I'll, uh, I could see the Santa hat nodding vigorously in approval. Brooks would also buy if is that he was true, given. Brooks? Yeah, I buy this one. Yeah. It, it, the Rams really are – I mean, speaking to your point, Mike, and not to – you know, belabor it, but they're like last year they were this perfect puzzle, and now all the pieces shifted to the right, and nothing quite fits. You know, the mm-hmm. offensive line they lost affects, the, they lost the edge pieces. Oh, yeah. you're making a puzzle. You got to start with one. the edge. Yeah, yeah it's and, hard to make a puzzle without edge pieces. Is that it Andrew is. Whitworth? Is he an edge piece? He is, like top performing when he's top performing. <laughs> well, because like it, it, last year it was still good, and now the it's all bent up. And well, if, old. if Gurley succeeds, it's all it all works together. If Gurley succeeds, then play action passing succeeds. 
you know, you take a little bit away from, you know, the pass rush. It's it, one thing and one thing. I it's the offensive line. I genuinely believe it's just the offensive line. Uh, obviously, all these players are good. McVay is good. But if they can't protect and they can't run the ball because of the offensive line, nothing works. So but that, that's why I like teams that you, if you unsettle some other teams, they can still overcome that. Right now, it does not seem like the Rams are the kind of team that can overcome. Like Jared Goff can't improvise his way into victory recently. I mean, we haven't seen that in a while, but I'll buy the girly. All right, Josh Jacobs. Jingle Heimer Schmidt. All right, Josh Jacobs, top 12 running back against Tennessee. I see what you mean, Jason, because I'm, I'm selling everything so far. Well, don't sell all of them because I plan to. <laughs> that's, the, that's my <laughs> cup of tea. All right, well, I'm going to sell this Josh Jacobs one. Like, they're not – they need to give him more work. Josh Jacobs is dominant. If you watched him playing against the Chiefs, Josh Jacobs was ripping ripping off huge runs, just gouging them with big plays, and he still ended up at the running back 28 because he didn't score. That's why you have to sell it. He had a nice game on the ground against Kansas City. He was over 100, wasn't he? I'll I think he, I think he was right, uh, right over 100 yards. Maybe he was 104, 17 for 104. Yeah. That's a great game. That's a great game. That what a great running back. Running back twenty eight. This, no touchdown. Obviously, if he gets into the end zone with that line, he's gonna he's gonna be a buy this week. Yeah, um, I mean the, the running back. Sorry, Jay, but a running back when they put up a hundred yards on the ground, and they are the running back twenty eight in fantasy. That's just not fair. The reason I'm selling Jacobs and the reason I've been kind of souring on him is because they're not utilizing him in the passing. So the touchdown upside because the Raiders are struggling right now is obviously lower, but I would be fine if they just utilized him in the passing game. Right now he's on a 16-game pace of 32 targets. Oh. That is not how you use a first-round running back who is great in the pass. Like, that's what's so weird about this. He is a smooth Yes. Receiver, he catches it in stride, doesn't miss a beat. But when you got Jalen Richard, Jason, right, you got to get you got to get him in there. You got to get Jacobs out of there. And and before the last two weeks, we knew that Jacobs was a player that put up top fantasy performances when the team was winning games. And when they're losing, he wasn't. And the last two weeks, they got blitzed by the Jets in Kansas City. And when he was forty first and twenty eighth, I'm gonna sell it. I, Tennessee is a good team. I'm not gonna buy that one. He's on pace for fourteen hundred rushing yards. Yeah. He's great. And 195 receiving. That's. I mean, he, he, yeah. is he leading the AFC right now? In rushing yards? I, that I don't know Go off the top of my head. He's got to be up there. DJ Chark, 75 receiving yards against the Chargers. Brooks even asked the question, is this line too high? Gardner Minshew is back. Chark is averaging 73 a game. LA is allowing the fourth fewest with just 199 total. I understand the line there because I would s I'd sell 75. Yeah, I'm 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 I shocked. What let's change it. Okay. Let's change it. Since you said that you understand why. Sixty receiving yards for DJ Chark. I'll Sixty buy receiving it. yards. Mike is buying. I will buy it. The matchup is tough. I get it against Casey Hayward. We saw Cortland Sutton have some success against this pass defense and I'm buying the, it too. Like Gardner being back is great news for DJ Chark to me. Yeah, I will still sell it at sixty yards okay. if you I know, hoped you said that, otherwise we really move that line. Too far. Too far. Yeah, I mean, going back through week six, uh, he would only beat 60 yards in two games, uh, and this is a really difficult matchup uh, against the pass. I mean, the Chargers are still, I think, underrated as far as being a poor matchup. You know, you talk about Buffalo and New England and the Niners, but I think the Chargers are near that level when it comes to the passing side. And an update, Andy, Josh Jacobs is number four okay. in the league in rushing, and in the AFC you have Derrick Henry and, of course, Nick Chubb, the rushing, current rushing leader. Okay, and Jacobs missed time, didn't he? Yes. So yards per game, he's got to be real close. Tyreek Hill, buy or sell, the last one here in this incredible playoff edition prepared by Brooks. Tyreek Hill, top seven wide receiver against New England. Ooh. Top seven? That's too, that's too no high. No way. Right? That's an easy sell for me. No way. All right, let's top move it. 15. Top 15 oh, receiver against New England. wow. Man. There you yeah. go. Um, the Pats have only given up one top seven this year. Yeah, there was no way I was going to buy that. Top 15, I'll sell it. Well, I'm sticking, <laughs> All I'm right. sticking with my guns here. Tyreek Hill is a guy that you're going to play as a – 
uh, top option. I mean, you don't bench Tyree Kill, but if you're looking at how often you know the New England Patriots are going to give that up and and how they take a, take away your number one weapon. Now Tyreek Hill very easily could finish top 15. He just needs a breakaway touchdown. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter your scheme yep. if you can't tackle a guy that's faster than your guy. And so Tyreek Hill certainly should be started like that, but I'm going to I'm going to, I'm going to sell because and and this is so here's something interesting and disgusting. I have manually adjusted my rankings to uh, bump Sammy Watkins up uh, Why? quite quite a bit. Number uh, two. You going with the, so, the number two option narrative? Don't, don't take this the wrong way. That's so stupid. Yeah, no, I don't take that the wrong way. But yeah, Is it because you're wearing a Lizard King shirt today? Oh, I didn't even put that together. Yeah, that's cold-blooded. <laughs> He's so bad, Jason. Why'd you move him up? Um, because New England is, is, you know, famous for taking away the number one option, making your number twos beat you. And I think if I was Bill Belichick, I'd be like, we've got to get the ball thrown You're to Sammy Watkins. Leave him alone. He's Just not don't even guard him. Make sure he's targeting Sammy. No. But my point is, <laughs> no, my point is, uh, I, I think they're going to do their best they don't have to worry about the running game right now as as the running backs are just depleted from Kansas City. If you take out Tyreek Hill and Kelsey, focus on those two guys, let everybody else beat you, you you're not going to get beat. So I'm I'm selling here. All right. I like the arguments, but in the spirit of competition, I will buy. The top 15? Yeah. All right, I'll sell it. That was Buy Yourself from Pristine Auction, pristineauction.com. Use the code BALLERS. Get some sports memorabilia. Like I said, next week we'll do a uh, we'll do some memorabilia giveaways. Let's get into some news. News and notes from around the league. Presented by Sleeper. All right. Ron Rivera has been fired. Head coach of the Carolina Panthers. What say you? I understand it. They have struggled for a couple of years. There's new ownership. I totally get moving on. And when you are the first one to let your coach go, you get a head start on looking for other replacements. That being said, I actually think Riverboat Ron is a is a pretty good, solid head coach, and I expect he will get a job. I, I wouldn't doubt if he's starting for another team next year. Starting, huh? As the starting head coach, as they say. <laughs> Okay. He's, he has three winning seasons in nine years with Carolina, Jason. Is that a good coach? I think I think he's I think he is a solid coach. I don't think he's like some great coach, but if you are a franchise that needs someone with leadership at the top, uh you t you you look at how the players talk about him, uh even players that aren't even on his the, the, his team anymore, you know, he is beloved. We're getting word this morning Cam Newton's going to undergo surgery on his broken foot. Mm, per perfectly timed. Yeah, so there you go. This Wait, is the but, surgery that is very often uh, – this is surgery one, and uh, this injury very often requires a second surgery. So I will be out on Cam Newton next year when we come in. And, you know, he, he might get off to a hot start maybe, but the re-aggravation is worrisome. Well, they, the, the Panthers will have to be – making some very difficult decisions. Cam Newton. He's uh, under he, contract this, he, he's, this year. Yeah, but next year is his last year on his deal. Right. And he has been getting beat up more and more. I, I, I don't envy the decision that they have to make. This is the surgery Newton had hoped to avoid. It's been mentioned as a relatively simple procedure on the list Frank area. Uh, it says the recovery time should be rather short. Yeah, so he'll, he'll be back in time for off-season stuff. All right, uh, we've got where James Conner, Juju Smith-Schuster, people want to know, are they playing against that wonderful Arizona defense? Where's your gut on them right now? Mike Tomlin said that, you know, they've got some work ahead of them. I don't think either of these guys plays this week. Tomlin said they're both questionable. He also said that Conner has the better chance of playing between the two of them. My gut tells me that neither of them will play. Yeah, I, I, I agree. Uh, John Ross is coming back from injured reserve, but Zach Taylor says they're going to have to ease him back in. I am not looking John Ross's way. It's Tyler Boyd, no one else in that passing game. Yeah, I mean, I, I made a funny tweet uh, that was just really a troll tweet talking about John Ross has the same number of uh, passing of receiving touchdowns this year as Tyler Boyd, Robert Woods, and Mike Williams combined, which is true and a stupid stat. How many does Boyd have? 
three. <laughs> so so yes. you put three plus zero plus zero. <laughs> yes, I did. And that, <laughs> and I had to specify receiving because Woods does yes. have a rushing. T- it's a really stupid tweet. Um, well done. But the point that I'm making is if you saw that tweet, it was not really a genuine pro Ross tweet. And I agree with you, Andy. You don't you don't play him. You don't look his way, even though he had a good couple of games with Dalton to begin the season. You, you just don't know how active he's going to be. All right. Spencer Ware was signed by the Chiefs. This was news yesterday. We also got word that Damian Williams might play this week against the Patriots. This is a mess. Ware seems to be, you know, emergency list signing. We think, you know, Darrell Williams is going to miss. And then if for some reason Damian can't get back, they need to have another running back available. So, look, my I'm a hands-off running back policy with the Chiefs this week. I don't know who's going to play. I don't know who's going to get the majority of the work. And I do know their opponent. And it's the New England Patriots off of a loss. And so if you combine those three things, you might be backed into a play, which McCoy is the only one that you can really do with with hope and confidence. Man. But I am I'm hands off. Yeah, this sucks. The, the Chiefs running back position should be fantasy gold, as it has been for years and years with Andy Reid. But mm-hmm. I – tend to side with Andy that it would have been great to have this information you know yesterday when people are trying to put the claims in for Darwin can Darwin be a end of season league winner the way that Damian Williams was last year and and it certainly does not look like that right now no doesn't look like he's gonna evolve into that Mike oh mm. you don't beer. forget drop it like it's hot that means check your waiver wire see who got released today it could be an actually very interesting day for you know, the players that were released on the waiver wire, people are backed into a corner with, like, needs to win one week. And if you're not that person, if you've got a bye week, you might find some very interesting players out on waiver wire and interesting defenses, kickers, that sort of thing. News and notes is always brought to you by the Sleeper app. We're going to get into the Thursday night preview. Before we do that, I want to thank today's sponsor, keeping the lights on, keeping this show going. It's our good friends at Sonos. Mm. And this holiday season, you can immerse yourself in all your favorite holiday classics with a new home theater system from Sonos. This is perfectly timed because we we all have Sonos products. I've been using the Move. I love my Sonos stuff all the time. And my uh, Papa Josh, who's the helps us with you know the community management here, literally this past week just decked out his entire living room. Uh, move got a new TV, got a new whole setup. And he went with Sonos, and he got the Sonos Beam and a couple of speakers, and he's just getting the subwoofer today, and it sounds amazing. Uh, they've been partners of the show for a long time. We've used tons of their equipment. It's great. Um, you know, you can play those Christmas carols. Oh, you're darn right you can. It's the holiday season. Oh, yeah, Jason has an album <laughs> coming out. Is there. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah you called yeah. the bass this time, mm-hmm. not baritone. Very nice. Thank you. Uh, you can wirelessly connect all the speakers. All you got to do is go to Sonos.com. You can learn more, complete your holiday shopping. And, men, I'm with you. I get it. <laughs> Losing your hair. It's not fun. It's not a good time. But Roman is here to help. There are FDA-approved treatments that can stop and even, in some cases, regrow hair. It, it, look, don't be ashamed of it. It is what it is. And if you want to stop it, like I do, then, you know, you connect with a U.S. licensed physician for a free online evaluation with Roman to see what treatment options are best for you. If the doctor decides that medication is appropriate for you, Roman will deliver it right to your door in discreet packaging with free two-day shipping. There are options for us follically challenged men out there. So, look, get to go, go to Get Roman dot com slash footballers to start your free online visit roman gets members started with free online visit free two-day shipping visit get roman.com slash footballers that's get roman.com slash footballers for a free free visit to get started get roman.com slash footballers all right let's talk thursday night thursday night breakdown all right the six and six cowboys take on the six and six Bears. Cowboys are two and a half point favorites in Chicago. The game's a 43 and a half point over under. This will be fun. Mitch Trubisky prime time. Let's go. Dak Prescott leading the league. I tweeted this yesterday in uh, passing yards per game. Number one, 315 a game. 
big difference with Kellen Moore uh, leading the offense, offensive co- coordinator there this year. Uh, Dak's three worst games of the season, though, have come on the road. We've talked about the fact Amari Cooper has struggled on the road. And here we are in Chicago. Both teams need a win. What do you do with Dak? I mean, is he in your lineup no matter what? No, I, I don't think it's a no matter what situation. Ryan Fitzpatrick, the great stream. Ryan Fitzpatrick. Are you, are you Ryan Tannehill. Them? Are you playing those guys over Dak Prescott? So, uh, this, Ryan Tannehill is a, a very interesting character this week. Looking at our you know start sit tool, he is he's like the number one most asked question. He's the number two most asked question. The number four. It's just everybody wants to know what do you do because Ryan Tannehill's been really good. He's got a very good matchup against uh, you know the Raiders, and so you 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 question okay. Can you actually trust him versus Dak, who's gotten you there? Here's how I view it. Dak is a good start. He's just not a great start. I don't think Dak is going to implode and end up with just a horrific week. So it's kind of matchup-based. Um, but if you look at what the Bears have done and what they've given up, you know, since week six, their bye week, they've only given up two top 12 performances on the year, granted – you know, they the, the last couple of weeks they haven't played great competition. They were on a third string quarterback against Detroit, who still did better than expected. You thought they would, uh, uh, <laughs> yes. uh. um, you know, and and Daniel Jones. So I I I see Dak as a low end quarterback one, high end quarterback two. You know, to to finish in that eleven to fourteen range. Uh, yeah, and so. I'm playing him. I think I'm playing him, too. Dak, he's just been too good this year. Dak only has two times that he's let you down, finishing as the quarterback 24. Yes, he has a QB 13 performance that he had on the road against the Jets, but whatever, man. I'll take the QB 13 when you have the upside of Dak Prescott. He's He's been fantastic. Yeah, yeah, I think I'm going to play him, too. Uh, David Montgomery, last week was the running back 14 against Detroit. Has had a few good performances fantasy wise in the last seven weeks, but it has not been consistent. Uh, he's had between 13 and 17 carries in all of the last five games. How do you feel about David Montgomery at home going up against the Cowboys' run defense that ranks 17th right now not in terms great. of fantasy points allowed? I feel not great. Not, not great. great at all. <laughs> um, you know, look, if, if it's a, a defense, you know, I, I talked about, I, I thought. Montgomery was a decent play last week because he was going up against a basement dwelling run defense. Now the Cowboys aren't some lockdown run defense out there, but they're not. They're not bad. They're just they're just an NFL defense that can stop a, a poor run. It's just and, an NFL defense, yeah, just, man. Just an NFL D. And David Montgomery is bad. He's just been terrible. He's just been completely ineffective on a per touch basis and I don't that was all think, true before last week though yeah but and my he point, had any had Detroit, a nice week my point was Detroit can't stop the run and so all of a sudden David Montgomery's like oh this is great look look at it they can't stop me but he I mean he has sucked against any high level of competition and I, I would put Dallas is certainly able to stop David Montgomery so Mike is he a top 20 Running back to you this week? Ooh, top twenty. I let's see. I'm gonna pump up at the rankings. I have him right now, sitting at 19, with Austin Eckler just behind him and Devin Singletary. And I think I'd play those two guys over Montgomery. So I would say no. Okay. And, and I got to move Montgomery down a bit. Uh, Tony Pollard was sidelined in Tuesday's practice. Uh, Judge, if you have any more news on Pollard for today, let us know. But right now, it's going to be Zeke. Obviously, he's in your lineup no matter what. Allen Robinson and Anthony Miller, we've talked quite a bit about them over the course of the past uh, couple of days. They both had monster weeks against Detroit on Thanksgiving, and here they face Chicago. They are at home. I'm sorry, they face Dallas. They are at home. And Anthony Miller, been soaking up targets. Brooks, can we get a status on Taylor Gabriel as that's, of right now? That's everything to me for if if you're going to take the chance and play Anthony Miller as a, as a wide receiver three or a flex play. The last three weeks, Dallas, you know, when facing uh, – they had been pretty staunch against fantasy wide receivers. 
But they gave up the seventh most against Detroit, 13th most against New England, ninth most against Buffalo. Last three weeks have been a little bit softer. And uh, last three weeks for Anthony Miller, 11 targets, 9 and 13. Oh, it's it's been amazing. Yeah. Gabriel did not practice yesterday. So. Yeah, and on the short week, I think we can pretty much say if he if he hasn't even trended through the protocol in the right direction yet and they are playing tomorrow, tomorrow yeah, he, Gabriel's yeah. out. I'm willing to – it's a tough situation because you do have certain players in your lineup that you're waiting on. Like if you're, if you're waiting on Julio or Thielen, you're not forcing Anthony Miller or Allen no. Robinson into your lineup over those guys. And obviously more confidence in Robinson long term than you do Anthony Miller. I think that you can flex Anthony Miller this week without Taylor Gabriel because this is a team that uh, you know should be – the Cowboys are favored and Anthony Miller's been getting 10 targets a game. So yep. that's as simple of an equation that I need. But we've only seen it for three games from Anthony Miller. Yeah, he's a talented wide receiver and he's getting targets. So if you make that argument to start him, uh, I think the, the process is, is sound. I'm not going to start him because I don't trust Trubisky against a decent defense. Please tell me you'll bet Anthony Miller versus your Sammy Watkins talk from earlier. Please, no, but please I tell will me take, you'll do that. No, I was. I have another name out there that I'm saying I would definitely play over him who's available on waivers. So if you want to make a, a bet against Zach Pascal, I'm all in. Pascal has a good matchup this week. He does. He's playing Tampa Bay. My point is there are other good options where you don't need to start Anthony Miller against the Cowboys if there are good options out there that you could pivot to. Yeah, and you consider Pascal to be one of those. I Who do. would you rather start, Anthony Miller, Mike, or Zach Pascal this week? Pascal. Okay. I was going to say, do you want to play Anthony Miller or player who's been on fire, at least fantasy points-wise, Debo Samuel? Debo Samuel would be playing the Saints, but, I mean, he's getting, what, like the four targets a game? I would play Debo Samuel. Okay. Upside there, probably. Uh, that's kind of what – when you play Dallas, you just kind of cut off the top end of your upside the way that their defense is playing. Amari Cooper on the other side. Look, they don't call him Mike right for nothing, okay? <laughs> they don't call him Mike wrong. No, they don't. Are we, I've tried. Oh, yeah. It we never tried takes. To, we tried to make him apologize. Russell yes. Wilson. The apologize to Russell. Oh, wait. Russell Wilson. <laughs> Mike's Look. throwing stats into our Slack channel this morning. Oh, though you mean the stat that Jared Goff has more quarterback one games than Russell Wilson? <laughs> yeah, or the fact that Tom Brady does as well. Did yeah, you bring many, him up? Tom Brady has as many top ten games as Russell Wilson. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So does Matthew Stafford, who hasn't been playing for like a and month. And so then you apologized to Amari Cooper a few weeks ago. Yeah, this is very this, reluctantly and insincerely. And people, people were all they were oh, like, "You need that, to redo that apology." Yeah, because it was, it was a it, bad apology. In fairness, it was a terrible apology. Yeah. Right. We didn't apologize and at since all. since Apology Gate took place about a month ago, Amari Cooper is averaging five point nine points per game as the wide receiver fifty two behind the likes of Willie Sneed and Brashad Perryman. He is on the road. Amari Cooper, in I a, apologize for nothing. In a tough matchup. Yeah. Against you are the, the worst, Bears. Amari. I believed in you. But what do you do? You I mean, play him. Yeah, you play Amari Cooper. Of course you play him. You play Amari Cooper, no doubt about it. It, It's unfortunate, but I know I, that he will bring you, you got pain. here with Amari Cooper. <sighs> I have doubt about it. I mean, you say you play him with no wow. doubt about it. I got some doubt. Okay. Uh, I mean, the Okay, so let's I'm going to rattle off some names. Do you play this person above Amari Cooper? Robert Woods against Seattle. Yes. Alshon Jeffrey against the yes. Giants. Okay, uh, let's go down here. Devonte Devonte Parker. Yes. Oh, Park Parker is Parker is okay. Parker is, does not have the name recognition, but he's like basically been a top five wide receiver. Yeah, number three over the last five weeks for Devonte Parker. All right, let's make it a little bit harder. Amari Cooper is the wide receiver eighteen in that span. Uh, I assume Andy Dalton is playing. So Tyler Boyd against Cleveland. Mm. Boyd has been very good with Andy Dalton. Would yeah, I'm, I'm going to play. I'm going to go down with. Cooper. I'm going to go. I'm going to go Cooper. down with Cooper. All right. But Michael Gallup, though, in the last five games, Michael Gallup is wide receiver 15. Amari Cooper is the wide receiver 18. In the last five, so are you taking a shot on? Like, would you rather play Michael Gallup in this matchup on the road or Anthony Miller at home in this matchup? Oh, mm. the wide receiver twos. The wide receiver against, two battle. I'm going to trust the quarterback. Okay, so, so you'll that go to Dak. Going Gallup. Yeah. Yeah. 
I'm gonna uh, saddle up. All right, I think you could do worse than Jason Witten at tight end. That's the definite. That's literally the tagline of Jason Witten. You could do worse. The that's, Jason Witten story, I suppose. The memoir. You could do worse. I think you. Can My do last a, ten years. I think you you could also do worse. Do a lot better. Yeah, yeah. The aforementioned yeah. Jack Doyle. That is the one area where they are giving up over ten fantasy points per game. Twenty fifth in the league. The Bears have been vulnerable, and when push has come to shove lately, mm. he's throwing the ball to Jason Witten. I mean. You could do worse. You could do better. <laughs> I think that I think that's fair. I don't. He's think the he's... tight end fourteen over the last five weeks. He's had two top ten performances, but then he's had three games outside the top twenty. So you got to hope he scores. That's what you're doing with Jason Witten. I'd probably be looking for more upside. Jay, you're right. I mean, in this matchup, you've got you know a forty three point over under. That's a, a little bit on the lower side, but not. Ooh. That's not a terribly low over under. I I still I expect. Less than I do more. I, I I would take the under on this game. Tight end 13 on the year. So Jason Witten is all queued up for his big tight end 12 finish. Oh, yes. that's right. That's a good point. You know we knew before How's the Frank season. How's Frank Gore going to get to, to running back 12? <laughs> yeah. He's, He's going to need a real big game. Not going to make it. All right. You guys want to get into the mailbag? Yep. Mailbag. Mailbag. All right. If you have a question, head to the website, thefantasyfootballers.com. You can click the submit a question button or dial our voicemail hotline 302-464-TFFB. Keep them brief to the point. We'll get we'll get to as many as we can. Before we do get into this first voicemail question, I don't know where you bump Sammy Watkins to, and I can't get him out of my head because every time <laughs> I look at you, you're wearing the Lizard King shirt. Yeah. I, don't tell me. I'll water bet you he finishes below wherever you have him. I don't care where you have him. <laughs> okay. But I don't I don't I don't care at all. <laughs> all right. That's a good Water bed. Well, Where do you have him? It now, on the record. I, I have yes. Now I'm going to say I have him as the wide receiver 44. That's I, fine. That's right. fine. There you you go. bumped him by the up way to 44. <laughs> yes. on the season. Yes. So this is not saying play Sammy. My point was in. Oh, it sounded like it when you said that. My point is in discussing Tyreek Hill. Sammy Watkins. If you include the entire year as the wide receiver 48, so you have him slightly above his season average. Exactly. Since if you just take out week one. He's a wide receiver 77 on the season. That is 77. Wow. Well, that is a player that you don't – You should. he should hang out with Robert Foster on the weekends. In, That's how good he is. In fairness to Sammy, since week one, he has only had Pat Mahomes most of the games, and he's only had a <laughs> lot – He's had – With he's or had, without Tyreek Hill. He's had plenty of targets. So I mean, You know, he like, actually hasn't now, though. That's changed. Over the last three weeks, he's under 10%. So his target share is actually going down because they've decided – He's well, not good. Yeah, he's decided. They've decided. Have you seen the slow watch him blow up this the, week? The slow that's mo. what I. That's what I need. Week well, and, and week one of the season and week one of the so playoffs. Here's, that's what we need, Sam. That's Sammy's I, style. I didn't say this because it's so stupid, but it is the truth, and I am stupid, so I will say it. <laughs> Part of why I <laughs> oh thank you. I, I was looking for this earlier. Part of the reason I moved him up was because they take the wide receiver one option away. But the other part of the reason, no joke, that I moved him up was because Sammy will do it when you least expect it, when you can't start him, when you didn't start him. Against the Patriots, you're not starting Sammy. Do not do it. But he going to blow up. In fairness to the Patriots, they also take away all your other weapons that as is well true. on that a week-to-week -week basis. All right, let's jump into the voicemails. Yo, what's up, ballers? This is David from Florida. And I just want to know what you guys make of the Julio Jones situation. He's just coming off of an injury, and if you have other options such as Devontae Parker or Cortland Sutton, would you start him over guys like them? Thanks. So uh, I'll weigh in first here. Julio was really close to playing last week. He was out on the field before the games. He wanted to play. He's a gamer. I would like to go – I'm, I'm going to go down with Julio. There's, there's no fathomable way that Julio is not in my lineup. If Julio is active, he has a history of – coming in and out of games, and we I've talked about recently waiting, if you can, on the week back from injury to avoid that risk. But we've we've always had that caveat with what except for the top tier players. Julio is flat out a top tier player. He's, you know, one of the best five wide receivers in the league. You know, you you know, Adam Thielen is, you know, a, a tier or two down where you go, okay, I don't know, maybe maybe I don't want to take that risk week one. 
you take the risk with Julio. It's a it's a plus matchup against the the Panthers. Yeah, Carolina. So I, I would like I I want to play Parker this week, but I'm definitely not going to play Cortland Sutton. Even with the the great game he had last week, I wouldn't play him over Julio. I I definitely I guess I understand the thought of playing Parker, locking him in over Julio with the injury risk because Parker over the last what six eight weeks is a top five guy. So. That one's closer to me, but I want to find a way to get Julio in my lineup as if, if he's active. Is what's that fair? What's so yeah? What's so hard with Devontae Parker is it's he's been doing it all year except for the first three weeks of the season. Devontae Parker has been very solid to great for fantasy purposes, but the sticker shock of like Devontae Parker from the Miami Dolphins is going into my fantasy lineup. It's in the playoffs. It's I get it. I like, it's still hard for me to do it. And I and I'm all about it. I'm all about Fitzpatrick for the playoffs and Devontae Parker for the playoffs. Like, but it's it's really one of those things where you need to do the the blind test of take his name away, just look at the statistics of his entire season. You say, oh yeah, that guy's going to my lineup for sure. Plus matchup. You have enough evidence now. He's and and just to be clear, this is not just opportunity. This is improvement. Yes, I was Devontae bring that Parker up. is an improved. Wide receiver, not just one taking advantage of opportunity. He has looked really good as Difficult a wide receiver. Catches, yeah, passes that are behind a, a DB, and he'll go up over the top and and grab it and come down. And and here's the thing: we talk about this with Cortland Sutton. Yeah, he was drafted. He's an improved to, wide receiver. He was drafted to be a superstar. You know, he he has physical gifts that now Devontae Parker, you, you might not remember, was also drafted yeah. to be a superstar. Now. It's rare that it happens after so long of a bust, but it He's seems a first rounder. Yeah, I mean, he was he was you know argued in that draft of is he the best wide receiver, um, and so you know he's good. He is a good wide receiver. Yes, he certainly turned into one. Let's get into another voicemail. Hey, ballers, this is Jordan from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Hey, I know you guys have them back to back in your rankings, and I'm just wanted to know if you guys prefer Jameis or Tannehill this week for a playoff matchup. Thanks, guys. Love the show. Yeah, it's it's actually pretty funny. The top five start-sit questions from the fantasyfootballers.com on the website, the tool, all five include Ryan Tannehill. Ryan Tannehill or Josh Allen, Ryan Tannehill or Sam Darnold, Ryan Tannehill or Ryan Fitzpatrick, Ryan Tannehill or Kirk Cousins, and Ryan Tannehill or Jameis Winston, this question. So we can go through all of those with where we have the rankings right now. And the easiest way to do that is to say we have Ryan Tannehill at quarterback 12 by consensus. Now, Mike and I both have him at 9. Jason has him at 16. But Darnold, right now in our consensus, is two spots ahead of Tannehill. Uh, by consensus, he's behind Mike and I, for, for Mike and I. Winston is ahead for all of us. So we would all go Winston over Tannehill this week. And I... Yeah, well, I believe that Winston, ranking. Winston has been too good for fantasy to bench, despite the fact that he had a bad game when their team blew out the opponent. He had a bad fantasy touchdowns. game. Yes, he it, had a good football exactly. game. Exactly. We also all have Kirk Cousins against Detroit at home ahead of Ryan Tannehill this week, and I think he belongs there, right? Yes. yes. What's the last one that was asked there? The Fitzpatrick? Fitzpatrick is the only quarterback that I have below Tannehill out of those five names you gave. Yeah, and Mike is the highest on Fitzpatrick, but still has him a little bit below Tannehill this week. Yep. Uh, we'll be paying attention to the, you know, we, we update rankings all week long. Weather could come into focus if, if these games get wet or windy or both. When you're, when you're streaming quarterbacks the last few weeks – the Sunday morning weather has made a huge impact on my rankings and on my personal leagues when I choose who to stream because there will still be guys on the waiver Sunday morning that you can pivot to who might have a better weather uh, game or you know if, if it turns out to be bad. Now, early in the week, we looked it up. There was pretty much no expected weather problems in any game. The, there was one game with 15-mile-an-hour winds, but that didn't seem like big gusts, no snow, no rain. No. So hopefully uh, that's good, but pay attention Sunday morning. Let me ask you guys a quarterback question here. Ryan Fitzpatrick against the Jets or Jared Goff at home against the Seahawks? 
As I have right now, I have them back to back, and Jared Goff that one spot ahead. But I don't think I believe that. I yeah, I don't think I do either. I think I like Fitzpatrick by a by a beard hair. I, oh, oh, that's a big beard yeah, hair. It is. That's long and curly. Now you're, now you're saying you just you like love him. Slam yes, dunk correct. on Goff. I am I'm the other way. Goff down. I am the other way. I I do believe where the rankings are right now. I think Goff is I, I would play golf over I mean the Seahawks aren't a great passing defense no they got a pass rush and that old line I'm just worried about that if Ziggy Ansa and Jadavian sure. Clowney go to town no that's that's go fair. to townie that's yeah fair. that's right uh we're moving <laughs> we're moving on can I start I, no I do I didn't get it and then I realized that you were getting Susie and yeah yeah okay. I, I got it it's a clowny. A regular, it's a clowny rhyme. Regular Bill Shakespeare over really here. Really shouldn't focus on it. I wasn't <laughs> proud of it. I'm not proud of it now. Timestamp. 46 <laughs> minutes. All right. And Jadavian Clowney <laughs> went to townie. All right. Yeah, it's good. And then he now got you're a in. brownie. Yeah, that's true. Boston Fern has a question from Twitter. Is Kirk Cousins safe to roll with through the playoffs? Should I be concerned about matchups against Chargers and Packers? Uh, not yeah. as I'm not as concerned about the Packers. I mean, Packers are still hitting you with the early season bias, their defense, what they were to start the year, the first three games, and what you believed about them. They're not a bad defense by any stretch. They're a good defense, but they're not what we thought when we began the year, so I'm not benching Kirk Cousins against them. The Chargers? Yes, you should be concerned. You should be a little concerned, but Cousins has been finding a way to put games together regardless of his weapons, and if Thielen comes back, it's going to help. The Chargers have allowed one top, one top 12. That's what I'm talking about against man. fantasy quarterbacks. I mean, they, other than that, it's. I the, mean, it's. And if you look the last what nine or ten weeks, it's tw they're averaging giving up like the twenty second or so. Yeah, I. I uh, the, this matchup is even worse than is I that remember. Game, the Chargers. Uh, that's in L. A. Yeah, that that one's tough. Cousins for context, QB five over the last eight weeks. Yeah, he's been great with but, five top ten. But performances. that's a matchup. I think I would. I would avoid. I would definitely avoid the Chargers. And I, I think the Packers are one of those where you don't have to avoid, but you've got weeks to prepare for that. Go look and see who's got you know, a, a better uh, pick. Oh, we know who you got to pick up. Who's that? It's Ryan Fitzpatrick. For the uh, – who, who's he playing? For the glory. 16? So, wait, when we're constructing this situation where you're dropping Aaron Rodgers heading into week 16, right, when you construct that, that situation – are you trying to strategically sign Ryan Fitzpatrick that week? Well, we can go to the resident producer, and I'm not talking about Brooks. I'm talking about our other producer, Al Borland. Who's actually on mic today, right? Oh, I am. He, he Whoa! is. And he, has, he is in our playoffs, in our league of record. He is playing Aaron Rodgers this He's week. He's a Packer fan. He yeah, is a diehard Packer fan. He, and he mocked Owl, us for saying Jameis Winston over Rodgers a week ago. But, Owl, after this week, when you're playing Aaron Rodgers – What's what's your plan? Are you going down with? I with, got Ryan Fitzpatrick. Oh, on your team, I do. Are you gonna Are you gonna play him? Because you're a pack. If you do it as a Packers fan, I just assumed you, you could help so many people by overcoming that. Uh, your cheese had nature. I assumed you that, would be saluting as the water <laughs> overtakes your body. I mean, that's <laughs> the the plan right now is to go with Ryan Fitzpatrick. But I'm gonna wait one more week to make a final decision. Let me tell you what's about to happen. <laughs> Aaron Rodgers is about to throw four touch four touchdowns yes. against the Washington Redskins, um, and then that's why we he's made going a plan to, three weeks ago. Then you, you're going to burn down with your guy. <laughs> that's what's about to happen. It's been an honor serving with you. <laughs> we'll I, report back. I I, I stumbled on uh, some clip from our show three or four weeks ago. I don't know. I was going through Instagram. Brooks cuts out some clips, and it just happened to be right after Aaron Rodgers had the zero touchdown week this was like two weeks ago and we all said that the oakland mirage ruined everybody when he went out against oakland i think he threw five yeah he had a monster game and every question about aaron Rodgers, i've said the exact same thing to every single person that's written in uh, on patreon or twitter which is aaron Rodgers can always throw five touchdowns he can always do it and that sits in the back of your head and he could do it against anybody. That's the other thing. It's just you're about to have a real tough real life decision there, Borland. Unless he just just loses in the playoffs. Yeah, you could this go week, out this week. Fine. That would make it easy. 
All right, Instagram, what's the best format for the playoffs? When should they start? How many teams should go through? Uh, I mean, obviously, this is going to be very – it's going to change from league to league. Are you a 10-team, a 12-team, or whatever? For the standard 12-team league, the, the method that we prefer is we've got six in, six out of the playoffs, two people with a – bye week the the best two records get a bye on that round one one week long playoffs I I am not a fan of the two week playoffs because it's different than the entirety of the season that you know you come to uh expect and and know how fantasy works and then um you know if you have divisions I like a division winner getting in outside of division winners top points but these are things for next year obviously you're not changing whatever structure was set up right now yeah yeah I, I think that's fair I used to be a fan of the two-week playoffs like you know 10 years ago because I felt like you spent so much time working your way to get there you deserve like to withstand nope. one fluky yeah bad just week. To I feel like the better team comes out on top in that situation but right you want yes exactly and that and that's true the better team comes out on top more often in two-week playoffs but the question is do you want it to reflect the season I mean because you know if if you're a two-week playoff team then you should also be one of those points uh versus head-to-head matchup you know because the better teams yeah get in I the mean playoffs. You, you take what you get in consistency you take away the drama and fun of of any head-to-head matchup so Twitter question we'll close with this one Zachary Green very important question how did each of you become Cardinals fans I've always wondered this <laughs> Well, uh, we are all born and raised uh, Arizonans. Well, pretty close. <laughs> pretty close. It's like Bane. <laughs> ah, I was born into the darkness. Yes, yes, we were. Uh, Mike and I were both born here and raised here. Mm-hmm. Jason, for the most part, you moved here when you were like two? No, I was like six months old. Oh, much. Yeah, so. So I've basically been here, but I was born on the other side of the planet. Yeah, so we were... Uh, Mother Russia, right? Like a deep in the woods. Yes. <laughs> you in in Blau? Yes. <laughs> so yeah, we were just all born and raised here. So we suffered through uh, Sun Devil Stadium and the the many, 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 many bad years. The, the one good Jake Plummer year, and then many, many the, bad years. The and giant metal scalding hot uh, seats that were out there. Yes. You're, you're in Arizona. And the pea troughs. Oh yeah, look oh, yes. look across into the eyes of the other <laughs> man <laughs> urinating as you <laughs> as you relieve. Before we close out, though, I'm I'm pulling the audible here. I'm going to put you guys in rapid round. Whoa! So okay. we're just going to knock out a couple quick questions. Do we have a here. rapid round drop? Not right now. Oh, okay. this is well, that wasn't fair. this is from Johnny Mick. Oh! It's time for rapid round. Yeah, we do. Canadian Bengals fan, do I trust Josh Allen for his playoff run? Baltimore, Pittsburgh, yes. New England. Yeah, I, mean, I think we answered that yesterday. And the question is, yes, upside is upside's cut off. Yeah. Instagram, Johnny, make it go away. Matt Ryan, droppable. Carolina, San Francisco, Jacksonville. No. Carolina. Mm, yeah, I play him against Carolina. Giovanni, what to do with Tyler Lockett, rest of fantasy playoffs? Find another option. Play him. From Ari Furman, would you play David Njoku this week if he's back no. in action? No chance. What if he plays this week? And then he plays Arizona the following If he plays week. a full allotment of snaps and catches five passes. If he plays this week, I don't care what he does. I'm playing him against Arizona. Tyler, Joe Mixon or John Brown? John Brown's playing I'm Baltimore. Not, I'm not, yeah, I'm going to go Joe playing, Mixon for sure. Mixon's yeah. playing Cleveland. John Brown's target share has gone down over oh, the last three weeks. Cole Beasley? Yeah, Cole Ooh. Beasley. Yeah. All right. And then this final one here from Brian. Jonathan Williams at Tampa Bay. No. Or Tevin Coleman against the yes. Saints. Yes, I'll go Coleman. Yeah, I'll go Coleman. Yeah. Oh, that's he. He said it's gotten gross. At the it is time. gross. Sorry, but it's sorry, the right Brian. That's yeah, rough. yeah. Snaps were not there for Jonathan Williams last week. Want to thank our studio sponsor, Pristine Auction. Derek Henry signed jersey, sixty-five dollars yesterday. That'll do it for the show. Thank you for joining us, subscribing, reviewing, supporting this podcast. We appreciate you. Matchups for playoffs. Week one, tomorrow and Friday. To glory! Goodbye. Thank you for listening to another episode of the Fantasy Footballers Podcast. Join our fantasy football community on jointhefoot.com and follow us on Twitter 
at the FF Ballers. Oh, Foot Clan, this holiday season, immerse yourself in all your favorite holiday classics with a brand new home theater system from Sonos. Look, why would you put Sonos on your wish list? Because awesome tech belongs on your wish list. And it's darn right it does. Innovative. And it's a great gift, too. If you want to give something amazing, I've been using the Sonos Move everywhere. Just got one a few weeks ago. I'm doing a project in the garage. Grab my Sonos Move, bring it out there to listen to music, putting up Christmas lights out front, go set it out there, doing something in the backyard. It's awesome. So check them out. Go to Sonos.com, learn more, complete your holiday shopping.